Hi, Brooklyn Attic Books here. Today, I will be talking about The Mole People by Jennifer Toth. So let's get to it. If you haven't already heard about The Mole People, uh, maybe you've heard about the Mole People documentary called Dark Days that came out in 2000. The film documentary person on that um, was active in doing their research about the same time as Jennifer Toth, who was getting a firsthand tour of these different communities that were still left over from the 80s. I believe by the time she was doing the research is kind of when the population size started to dwindle um, in the in the trains, underground tunnels and such. Um, thinking back about the different types of groups that she came across, it's a lot of like, it's, it's kind of crazy for whatever reason. Uh, well, let's not beat around the bush. Most of the people that are homeless underneath living in tunnels in very, very dangerous situations are doing it because they're not thinking straight. They're thinking about their next high. Uh, there's a lot of drug users down there. They're very dangerous. They don't really care. They've given up on life. However, where this becomes extremely interesting is that for one reason or another, like I mentioned before, for whatever reason, people do actually go live in the tunnels underground and create their own little communities of people, um, where they allocate different chores to different people. It seems that food is the least of their worries. Apparently, New York City is extremely generous and abundant in food waste. And when a lot of these folks, they actually come to the above world, they actually work. And they do put in the time and effort to make these connections with people in the outside above world that they can rely on for supplies. Um, some of these people are in between. So sometimes they'll live down there and other times they'll, I don't know, go back to their own homes, their own families, whether it's to their parent or, I, I don't know, a sibling usually, something like that. A lot of these people have also rejected uh, our modern day laws and rules. They don't want to live up, but live by the same rules that the rest of us are you know, that we're all born into, you know, I mean, this is, you know, modern day society. This is what we're subjected to in one way or another, right? Whether you like it or not, this is the world we live in. <laughs> How many times have you heard that? Well, these people have rejected that and said, no, I'm going to go live in the tunnels and have my freedom. But it is a very dangerous place to be. As I mentioned, um, there's not a lot of publicity on the, on these tunnels. It's all dark. Their eyes are adjusted to the to the darkness. Um, and it, you know, different people are interviewed in this book where they say you, it's a dangerous place. If you fall asleep and roll over and get shocked by the third rail, you're done. You're dead. You could easily fall from somewhere high and break your neck and unless a rail worker discovers your body and even then who, who are you? Most of these people don't have documentation. Um, it's quite sad. Actually, the most sad chapter I found in the whole book was the runaways about the kids. Uh, most of them seem to come from sexually abusive backgrounds, uh, as young as like five years old. I mean, I, I, it's actually heartbreaking. There are moments in this book that um, you kind of have to put down and, you know, maybe have a moment to yourself and uh, to step away from the book because it does get extremely real. Uh, it's a very interesting um, look at another subculture 
within one of the finest cities in the world. I don't say that because I'm a New Yorker, but I do say that because I'm a New Yorker. I love my city. And it's very interesting to see where, you know, you have billionaires living above ground, right above where these homeless people have rejected to be part of society. It's just, it's extremely interesting. Um, so where are they now? What's going on in the tunnels now? That's probably everybody's number one question when they read the entire book is there's got to be people there now. Well, as I've said, I linked a few uh, videos from YouTube that I've watched and I've linked Dark Days, which was the documentary that came out in 2000. Um, it's a little different than Jennifer's account because Jennifer is actually uh, a journalist. So she's, uh, she's a postgraduate student, uh, postgrad, I guess she, well, she's not a student anymore, but she got her master's from Columbia University. And I think this was an, an idea that she um, took out of the, took out of a conversation with a friend of hers, I believe. It, it describes in the book why she decided to go forth with this idea and to do this extensive research on the mole people. I mean, the first time I heard about the mole people being a New Yorker, um, it was freshman year in a speech class where we had to research uh, an idea or a topic. And somebody actually did their speech on the mole people. And after that, I was hooked. I mean, who, what? There's people who live in the train stations below under the city, I mean, mind blown, right? So it's a very, very good book. It is nonfiction. I highly recommend it. I mean, you know, it's nonfiction from the subject, but um, I do have a controversial uh, tidbit or opinion on the end of the book. So at the end of the book, which it's not the last, last chapter, but it's like part of like the the ending of the book and her research is that she describes that her tour guide, um, I think his name was Blade, uh, actually killed somebody and thought that she witnessed it and then she ran away and then she went away on like a family vacation weekend. And then when she came back, she played like, oh, that wasn't me. I wasn't even here. And the guy ended up like, I guess, putting his tag in the basement of her apartment building. And then that's when she was like, no, I got to leave New York. This guy's going to kill me. Uh, I think she plays it off in the book that she didn't witness the murder. But I think in reality is that that, that was just her move of being like, hey, I didn't see anything. But and I think she did because... <laughs> Even in the book, the last line is like, a week later, I left New York for good. And it's like, e yeah, you witnessed a murder and you're scared. <laughs> um, I really highly recommend it. Everybody I've recommended it to and that have picked it up have loved it. So this is probably one of my newest favorite books. Um, my next book is actually a buddy read that I'm starting on February 1st through with some Instagram friends. If you want to follow me there, my name is Brooklyn Attic Books, and I hope you follow me here and subscribe to my channel. But I will be reading Clark, Childhood's End. And I've never read Arthur Clark, even though I, I sell a lot of sci-fi books. Uh, this will be a first for me. And a lot of people recommend this to me as a staple that I must read it. So uh, way to hype it up, guys. <laughs> I hope it lives up to the hype. My current read, however, is a book that I was trying to sell on my website, but it didn't because it's a pretty rare book and it's a little pricey. But I decided to keep it instead. It's called Five to Die. And it is uh, published in 1970, and it is before Helter Skelter. It is the book 
that actually convicted Charles Manson to the murders. It's extremely interesting. This will be my uh, review coming soon. I'm I'm actually devouring it. It is very interesting to see uh, the techniques that these cult leaders actually um, use to brainwash their followers to do anything that they want. It's insane. Uh, stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.